please don't make this huge mistake when it comes to Social Security. I, this is, I mean, literally, we're talking, the example I'm going to show you is a $435,000 mistake. It's not clickbait, my friends. It's just basic math and reality, how Social Security works. Please understand. And I, this is going to be part of Chapter 4 of my soon-to-be uh, published book, you can retire on Social Security. So stay with me. Uh, let's go down to this. We're going to start here with the, uh, the Kiplinger's article from 2018, which is actually fantastic. And I re referenced this in my, uh, my book in Chapter 4 again. Uh, basically, they're saying delaying Social Security boosts the value of COLAs. And so I'm going to put a link in the show notes here. But the essential thing is we have a lady, we'll call her, uh, we'll call her uh, Joan. We got Joan and Jane. So Jane's the example. I'm going to use my spreadsheet over here. Joan is what we're going to use here. Sorry. Joan is 62 today. She receives her Social Security statement and she goes, I have an option to take Social Security now. Wait till I'm 66, which is my full retirement age, and my, and, or take it at 70. So uh, Joan is sitting here today with her statement wondering what she should do. She looks at her statement and it says her PIA is $2,000. Her PIA is the amount she gets at her full retirement age at 66. If you don't know these terminologies, you need to. So either read my book or go watch more of my videos. Uh, Devin Carroll does great work. Uh, Larry Kotlikoff writes a lot of good stuff as well. So watch Car Devin, read Larry, or watch me. All right, either way. So she said, okay, but if she takes it today at 62, it's reduced to $1,500 a month. If she waits until she's 66, she'll get $2,000 a month. And if she waits with her earning credits, or delayed earnings credits, until she's 70, she'll get uh, $2,640. So it's $15,000, $2,640. But it's more than that, more to meet the eye than that. Because what happens is she's getting a cost of living adjustment on each of those benefits each year. So even if she doesn't take her benefit until 66 or 70, those are still growing with cost of living adjustments. And so Bill Reichenstein over at Baylor, he runs a number using a 3% compounded COLA. I don't like the 3%. I'd, I'd much rather use the trustees report, uh, which is 2.6. Uh, it, it adds up for sure. But anyway, he's using a 3% cost of living adjustment. I don't get that either way. But he says basically what would happen is if she took it at 62, her benefit will be 1,688 by the time she hits 66. Yet if she waits until she's 66, she's not going to get a $2,000 a month benefit. It will have risen to $2,251. That makes sense. So her benefit is growing by cost of living adjustments from 62, 66 until 70. Now, the interesting thing is if she waits until she's 70, those eight years of 3% cost of living adjustments, her benefit, which was initially uh, 2,640 will have grown until she's uh, $3,343. Huge increases in cost of living adjustments. Uh, so basically we're talking $810 more a month by just the cost of living adjustments on top of the 8% delayed earnings credits. And so what happens is it becomes a growing gap because the greater the amount, $1,500 growing at 3% is only going to give you a increase of uh, one, uh, $145. So $1,500 will give you an increase of $45. $2,000 will give you an increase of $60. $2,060 uh, will give you an increase of $120. So you can see there's a huge difference, or $2,600 will give you an increase of $120. So a huge difference in the actual dollar amount because $1,500 obviously is significantly lower than $2,000, which is significantly lower than $2,640. So even though the compounding rates are the same, the actual dollars, the money you use to spend, it grows more and more rapidly for the more it is. And that means the longer you wait, the more you're going to get with adjustments for cost of living adjustments plus the delayed earnings credits as well. So let's get into the spreadsheet I've got. And this is, again, from Chapter 4 of my book, uh, You Can Retire on Social Security. That's coming out here by the end of uh, next week. All right, so here we got uh, Jane. We're going to call her Jane. Uh, Jane is the same thing as Joni. She's 62 today, and she gets her statement in front of her deciding what she should do. And the Social Security Administration thinks as a 62-year-old woman, her life expectancy is 24 years. So she'll live until she's 86 years old because she's 62 today. But if she waits, if she survives until she's 67, the Social Security Administration at that point thinks she'll live for another 21 years. 
and thus her life expectancy will be, it's actually 87. It's, it's, uh, it's 20 and 0.4, so let's just change this around a little bit to make it so it's not so confusing. It's actually 20.4. Four or five, something like that. I just round it up. Either way, we're going to say it's 87 years old because it's closer. So they think she's going to live another 20 years when she's 67. Her life expectancy will be 87. When she's 70 years old, so now she survives until she's 70, at that point, Social Security thinks she'll live another 18 years until she's 88. So if she takes that 62, she'll have 24 years, according to Social Security, of re to receive her benefits. If she takes that 67, she'll have a little bit more than 20, but a little bit less than 21 years to receive her benefits. And we're just going to say 20 for, uh, for the simplicity of it. If she takes that 70, she'll have 18 years to receive her benefit. So the question becomes, as she's looking at today, she says, okay, my annual benefit hits her monthly benefit. We're just annualizing these. My annual benefit at 62 will be 24000 My annual benefit at 67 will be roughly 35000 My annual benefit at 70 will be roughly 43000 But if I wait until I am 67, the cost of living adjustments, again, using 2.6, which is what the trustees report says, Gives me a thirty nine thousand three hundred and six. I'll get a little bit uh, about a forty, almost a five thousand dollars more a year than I would if I take without the cost of living adjustments. However, if I wait until I'm seventy, I'll get almost a, 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 just about a ten thousand dollar increase than if I would take it at seventy because of cost of living adjustments. So the cost of living adjustments are growing for me even if I did not take the benefits. So if we go over here. Here she is taking that 62. She has 24,204, 204 in the first year. Adjusted for 2.6 inflation, she has 24,833, 25,479, and so on and so on. And then you can see here when she takes that 66, her benefit today is 34,572 when she's 62 and making that first determination when to take it. But that's going to grow a 2.6 year, even though she's not receiving her benefit until she's uh, 60, 67, excuse me, until it's 39,306. So the dark, the bold is when she actually takes the benefit. And if we go over here, now she's again at 62, her benefit at 70 would have been 42,864. But because of cost of living adjustments, it's actually 52,635 when she takes it. A huge difference here. So she takes her benefit at 62. She gets regular cost of living adjustments, and she takes it until she dies at 86. She'll make $837,000 in Social Security benefits. Not too shabby. Nothing wrong with that. That's a, that's a lot of money. But if she would have waited until she's 67, again, she'd sacrifice these first five years from 62 to 67, 66. But by the time 67 rolls around, her benefit, which was 34500 has grown with cost of living adjustments to 39306 So look at the difference. At 67, her benefit, if she took it at 62, had grown from 24204 to 27515 That's about uh, $3,200 total. But here at 67, her benefit grew from 3000 grew, grown, <laughs> grown from... <laughs> Groon? I'm making up new numbers. Uh, grew from uh, 34,572 to 39,306. So a $5,000 increase, all right? Now she takes that 62, 67, and it's grown to 40,000, 41, 42, until by the time she dies, her life expectancy of 87, she gets 1.079 million. Now, here's the kicker. If she took it at 70, Again, she wasn't getting any money from 62 until 70. So her benefit grew, even though she wasn't receiving anything, from 42000 to 45 to 47 as you can see here, all the way until she's 70 years old. So now it's 10000 more. At 60, at 70 years old, her benefit that she initially looked at getting when she's 62 has grown from 42864 to 52635 her benefit was 24,204 when she was 62, and now at 70, it's 29,721. So that grew by $5,500 over those eight years. The benefit at 62 was 34,572 if at her PIA, 
which has grown to 42,000 uh, 453 so about eight, $8,000. So it grows from $5,500, $8,000 to $10,000. That's the value of the cost of living adjustment. So what happens here, she takes that 70, all those colas are kicking in. By the time she kicks the bucket at 88 years old, she's making $83,000 in social security benefit with a total amount of 1.7, 1.2 million. So the difference between 1.2 million at taking that 70 with cost of living adjustments is uh, and 837,000 taking that 62 with the cost of living adjustments is $434,866, a significant difference. Now, what people say is, yeah, but Josh, if she took it at 62, uh, she still could survive until she's 88, just like this guy over here at 70. I said, yeah, so here it'd be 931,000. She would have gotten extra two years of earnings and then she would have died at 88 years old, as did she did if she took it at 70. Uh, she still would have made $350,000 more in Social Security income if she waited delayed until she's uh, uh, 70 years old. So let me just give you an example. At 80 years old, her benefit when she initially looked at, at her statement at 62 years old, at 80 years old, is uh, she taken it at 62 is worth 38418 So 14000 more a year than she had taken at 62. However, if she took it at her full retirement age, her benefit, which initially uh, was 34000 has now grown to 54000 if she waited until her initial uh, full retirement age. Her benefit, if she waited until she's 70, when it was initially 42000 has grown to $68,000. $26,000 more has grown from the cost of living adjustments and the delayed earnings credits. Uh, I mean, I that's almost more than what her initial benefit was. It is. That's more than what her initial benefit was at 62. 28, I mean, look at 68,037 is what her benefit would be at 80 years old if she had delayed until she was 70 to take it. It started off as $42,000. That is $26,000 more. I mean, that's, yeah, 26,000 bucks more. Her initial benefit at 62 was only 24,204. I mean, just look at that. It's huge. So we're talking, see, that's the thing. The gap gets bigger and bigger and bigger the longer you wait for the benefit. Uh, all right, so I'll link to my uh, article I just did on this that I sent to my subscribers at uh, on my webpage at heritagewealthplanning.com, uh, my email subscribers. I just, you gotta, I just hope you think about this. This is, look, and look, at the end of the day, if she dies at 88, regardless on any of these scenarios, I mean, she's going to... I mean, I, I don't even know how else to say this. It's like if she, I mean, you can slice this any way you want, but the facts are the Social Security says a woman who's 62 years old today is going to have a life expectancy of 24 until she's 86. There's just no way you can take benefits earlier uh, and expect to receive more uh, than than if you waited. There's just no way. Now, if you think there's a couple of reasons, you might have you might be affected by GPO, the government pension offset. You might be affected by the windfall elimination provision. Um, uh, you might you might have a big pension, so you're going to get hammered on taxes. A couple of things I would say take Social Security early, but I mean this is real money. This is huge, and this is guaranteed with cost of living adjustments from the government. It's not relying on the stock market. I just, it's, uh, there's just no way you can slice and dice this. Or you might say, look, I'm not going to live beyond 75. Okay, and that way you probably take Social Security uh, early because at least here you got 15, uh, well, 14 years of payments. And by the time you die, your payment will be 33791 uh, Whereas by the time you die, your payment will be 59842 if you would have waited till you're 70. Actually, I'm just curious. Let's see what this would be. Equals sum. We're going to sum. Let's sum. Oops. Let's sum these guys here. Equals sum. We're going to sum. I can't figure it out. Why does it think you get my way? Anyway, so let's just see here. So if we take that 70, 52, 54, 55, 59, a 60, 60, 60, 50, 50, 50. So we got three years. If we take that 75, left six years, of which three will pay us 50, three will pay us 60. So we got 160, 180 plus 150. That'll give us three hundred thirty thousand dollars. Here we got 30, 30, 30, 30. Basically 30. We'll just say a little bit more than 30. So 30, 
times six, uh, $180,000. I mean, even, let's see. Yeah, it's still going to be, I mean, if she dies at 75, she is 29. Why can I freaking sum this? This is going to drive me crazy because that thing keeps getting my way. It's the weirdest thing. I don't know why it keeps doing that. Let's do, there we go. There we go. We'll just do it like that. So let's just do this here. So she'll make $330,000 if she takes that 70, even if she dies at 75. Okay. So she takes it at, let's do this. You ready? She takes it here, dies at 75. She'll make $402,000. All right. All right, good. So that's that gives us something to go on. So she takes it at 62 and dies at 75. She'll make 402. If she takes that 70 and dies at 60 at uh, 75, she'll get what did I say 330. Interesting. So if she takes it at 78, let's do this. I think that's usually a break even, if I'm not mistaken. The 78 is 526. All right. So let's do this. If she takes that 70, it dies at 78 here. There you go. All right, so seven, it is 78, 77, 78 is always a break even. That's always what it is. And that's what because you got to look at cost of living adjustments. I, I mean, again, so if you really believe you're going to die before 80, you probably ought to take it early. I would ask you to really think long and hard about that because simple facts are, though, Social Security uh, believes that if you can survive until you're 62, you're not going to die at 80. You're going to die at 86. Half the population will die at 86. That's what, they're at. That's what their numbers show. And no one knows it better than Social Security because they're looking at the number of deaths. <laughs> they know. And if you, if you survive until you're 67, they think you're going to live well into your 80s as a woman. And 70, you're going to almost live to your 90. <sighs> think long, long and hard before taking it early. And uh, I don't want to hear the Smith & Wesson retirement plan. I've heard that. Um, yeah, yeah, no, you're not killing yourself. I mean, I'm sorry. I know people do. People throw that use it as a throwaway line because they don't want to throw in because they're just looking for a reason to take it early because they just because it's scared they're scared what if they don't take and they die and I said but you won't know but the likelihood of that happen is not high I, and even that if you're married if you take it or if you take it later let's just say you said I'm not going to take it until I'm 68. Well, that's what your surviving spouse is going to get. I mean, I don't know what her benefit your, or your benefit, whatever your spouse's benefit is going to be. I don't know. But I mean, even if you delay and you don't get anything because you died, then you're leaving your surviving spouse with a significant higher benefit than this right here. I mean, look at this. You die. That's what she's going to get. You die. That's what she's going to get. That's twice as much just by delaying it, even if you didn't get the benefit early. Ah, just you got to think long and hard about this, my friends. All right. So always smash. Love to hear your questions, comments, concerns. If you like the video, share it with people if you would. It's uh, it's important. Uh, YouTube does, you know, they can give you a hard time sometimes promoting your your uh, your video. So, uh, you, know, you know, do me a do me a solid and share the video with others, too. And we'll see you next time. Thanks now.